All your favorite social media influencers and scientists are doing red light therapy. Chamber place, but they, they had a red light bed and I was using it. I have my own device right here next to my workstation. It's said to have benefits on skin health, energy production, mood, sleep quality, exercise, eye health, and even testosterone. A biological phenomenon and medical treatments. I can't summarize all of those now. It would take me many, many hours. In this video, I'm going to look at the science of red light therapy and talk about if there are any evidence-based benefits. So make sure to hit the like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Our story begins in 1903 when a physician from the Faroe Islands, Niels Finsen, won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in recognition of his contribution to the treatment of diseases, especially lupus vulgaris, with concentrated light radiation. He used light therapy to treat various skin infections such as lupus vulgaris and smallpox lesions. Some of the before and after pictures are quite astonishing. People went from very serious skin damage to almost complete recovery. But light therapy stayed relatively unknown for the next few decades. After the invention of low-level lasers in the 60s, laser therapy was found to have the potential for wound healing, pain reduction and improving recovery. The first healing was done on patients with skin ulcers. Since then it's discovered that specific low-level lasers aren't needed for these therapeutic benefits. Regular LEDs with the comparable wavelengths of light have been seen to be as effective. That's why you've seen such a rise in popularity of these red light therapy devices at home. The technical term for red light therapy is photobiomodulation, which describes the application of red or near-infrared light to stimulate tissue regeneration, recovery and healing. Other terms include low-level laser therapy and light-emitting diode therapy, but they employ the use of low-level lasers together with red light. Sunlight consists of ultraviolet light between 300 to 400 nanometers. The entire visible light spectrum 400 to 700 nanometers, red light 600 to 700 nanometers and infrared light 700 to 1200 nanometers. Red light therapy utilizes wavelengths of 630 to 900 nanometers. Low-level laser therapy and photobiomodulation are examples of hormesis with a biphasic dose response where lower doses tend to be more beneficial than high doses by generating a certain amount of reactive oxygen species. Red and near-infrared light stimulates cytochrome C oxidase inside the complex 4 of the mitochondrial electron transport chain which promotes ATP synthesis, blood circulation, tissue regeneration, energy production and collagen synthesis. Red light therapy also protects against oxidative stress, helps with muscle repair, increases RNA and protein synthesis, and increases nitric oxide. Red and near-infrared light has been seen to improve these things. Mood and alertness, eyesight, collagen synthesis, pain reduction, thyroid function, and sleep quality. A 2023 study saw that three months of photobiomodulation showed a reversal in visible signs of skin aging. The participants were using a red light face mask, and their skin wrinkle scores decreased, their skin elasticity increased, and their crow's feet around the eyes decreased as well. Red light therapy also increases hyaluronic acid and elastin in the skin, which supports skin elasticity. The reason why red and infrared light have such a powerful benefit on skin health is because they're able to penetrate much deeper into the skin than other wavelengths of light. Inside the skin, red light stimulates energy production, blood circulation, and collagen synthesis. Another 2020 study used red light therapy on only the left side of the participant's face twice a week for eight weeks. After the experiment, the red light therapy group had higher skin elasticity and better skin texture. So there are many studies that red light therapy has skin anti-aging and rejuvenation benefits. I've been using red light therapy for the last six years pretty much every day and my skin has never been better. But you have to be very careful with the type of devices you use because most of them don't have the actual wavelengths of light shown in research to benefit skin health. Just because it looks red doesn't mean it has the actual wavelengths of light. Blue light between 430 to 510 nanometers actually slows down skin healing and causes causes more damage to the skin. So some of the more gimmicky devices out there, they might look like red, but they're actually just blue light masked as red light. That's why the product you use should specifically say 630 to 900 nanometers of light. If you want to get red light therapy devices that use exactly that, then check out Bond Charge. They have red light therapy devices with both the regular red light and infrared light setting, plus infrared sauna blankets for additional cardiovascular health benefits. Head over to bondcharge.com for seamland and use the code seam for a 15% discount. But red light therapy actually has quite an interesting effect on sports performance as well, not just aesthetics. So much so that some people have petitioned to ban red light therapy in competitive sports. The reason has to do with how red light therapy increases energy production and speeds up recovery. There are many studies finding that red light therapy improves exercise performance. In competitive endurance cyclists, low level laser therapy prior to exercise increases time to exhaustion. Compared to exercise alone, photobiomodulation used 
before and after exercise can improve endurance three times faster. Time to exhaustion, oxygen uptake and body fat have all been seen to improve with photobiomodulation compared to placebo. In high level rugby players, a combination of super pulsed LLT and red infrared LEDs improves sprint times, reduces feelings of fatigue and accelerates recovery. A 2016 meta-analysis on photobiomodulation and muscle performance concluded that it reduces lactate levels, increases peak torque, increases repetitions by on average 3.5 reps and increases time to exhaustion by 4 seconds. These effects were mostly discovered in the use of pre-exercise low-level laser therapy. So both aerobic exercise as well as power output increases when you're using photobiomodulation. Most of the benefits appear to come when you're using red light therapy before exercise. However, the effects might not kick in until 30 to 60 minutes. In volleyball players, photobiomodulation 40 to 60 minutes prior to games was able to significantly reduce muscle damage. Pre-exercise photobiomodulation reduces skeletal muscle damage, inflammation and creatine kinase. This is because of a phenomenon called preconditioning hormesis. Basically, exposing your body to a small positive stressor prior to exposing yourself to a larger stressor reduces the negative side effects of the larger stressor because your body has already conditioned itself to adapt to the stress. For example, if you take a sauna or exercise before traveling, you're less likely to become sick because your immune system is now stronger. With red light therapy, you cause this small hormetic stressor to the body that increases its energy production and blood circulation that reduces damage from exercise and speeds up recovery. Photobiomodulation even demonstrates a positive effect on muscle repair processes by regulating growth factors and increasing angiogenesis, the growth of new blood vessels. However, one 2016 study discovered that pre-strength training photobiomodulation yielded great greater strength gains than doing it after training due to enhanced resistance against muscle damage. So doing photobiomodulation before exercise actually appears to be superior than doing it after exercise, although both of them can have benefits. But if you are doing it before, then you need to do it about one to two hours before exercise, because it takes at least 40 to 60 minutes for the benefits to kick in. There are no serious harmful effects to the therapeutic use of photobiomodulation. The most common side effects include tiredness and redness of the skin if used too much or too close. Red light therapy is also beneficial to the eyes and it has been seen to improve eyesight. However, you don't want to be directly looking at the light because it's still very bright. Here's an overview of the guidelines of photobiomodulation. 630 to 660 nanometers for red light and 800 to 900 nanometers for near infrared light. Use photobiomodulation anywhere from 40 to 60 minutes up to 3 to 6 hours before exercise for about 5 to 10 minutes. You can also use photobiomodulation after training for 3 to 5 minutes. Like I said, I've been using red light therapy for the last 6 years almost every day. I like it every time I use it. It improves my mood, improves my energy and improves my skin health. You can check out Bond Charge for the red light therapy device they have devices for all different sizes, the big towers, as well as small handheld devices. They even have the red light face mask. Head over to bondcharge.com forward slash seamland and use the code seam for a 15% discount. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Thanks for watching. My name is Seam. Stay optimized, stay empowered.